So Colin, we're on this farm in the Lake District. Uh, the farmer's decided to plant one of his fields up with some trees this coming winter. There's lots of features here that we can use in our planting design for ecology and landscape. And uh, perhaps we can have a little look at those features and see how we can use them best. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And the first clue we've got on site is we can see we've got some mature trees in the background. We've got some oak and ash and birch. So we know if we plant those, they'll do really well. Yeah, and of course, we've got this hedgerow here to my left and to my right. Yeah, that's a great feature on site and we certainly wouldn't want to see that removed. We'd want to incorporate that into the planting plan, definitely. Fantastic. And I noticed at the top of the site there's one or two mature, larger trees. Again, that should be incorporated. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, and I noticed the site's been quite tightly grazed. The farmer's had his sheep in here. Yeah, that'll make the site very easy to plant, but of course we'll want to exclude stock once the trees have actually been planted. Okay, well, should we go and have a look at the features on this site and uh, see how we can use them best? Sounds cool. good. All right. And here's that wonderful silver birch we were talking about earlier. Yeah, it's a beautiful old tree. We wouldn't want to plant too close to it, about 10 metres back, and then the trees will survive. We could use it probably as a seed source as well, can we? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. It'll uh, drop lots of seed into the site and we'll get some natural regeneration. And while we're here, I really like this bank. I think this bank could be used as a as a way of planting at the top of the site and leaving some nice warm sunny areas at the bottom for wildlife. Yeah that's a nice feature, wildlife and people will, will both benefit from that. Fantastic. One of the things I particularly like about this site Colin is this old hedgerow. Hawthorn hedge, full of berries, wonderful for wildlife, dormice, birds coming in the winter. It's a real feature of a past agricultural landscape isn't it? Yeah it's a great feature and we'd certainly want to incorporate that into the planting plan, we wouldn't want to see that removed. So many of these old hedgerows have got remnant floras from older periods and quite often you see bluebells or dog's mercury or primrose, things like that, see those in the spring, it's fantastic. This one however has been quite heavily grazed for many many years so probably not much of that left here. We've come to the bottom of the site, it's quite boggy and wet as indicated by these reeds. And is that going to influence your species choice? Yeah, alder and willow are going to be the two trees that will thrive in this area. OK, Pete, so we've got some fantastic old oak trees here on site. Again, we wouldn't want to plant too close to them, but they'll be a great seed source for the future. And we've seen other species on site like birch, willow, alder, ash. So they give us lots of clues of, of what we should plant and what's going to do well on site. Fantastic. And we know why the farmer's interested in planting a woodland here. He's concerned about his carbon footprint. He wants a more ecological, more diverse farm. And he's also thinking about wood fuel for the future. Yeah, yeah. There's lots of very good reasons for planting this area of the farm up with trees. So we started the planting, Colin. We've got a nice random group of trees planted here in these deer tubes. Sure. Lots of deer in the area. They're about two, two and a half metres apart. I'm six foot tall, so that's about two and a half metres apart. But nice and random, so some of the spacing's a bit wider, some of it's a bit narrower. All the tubes and the stakes are nice and straight. But uh, what, sort of, what sort of aftercare are they going to need? Yeah, one of the biggest threats to the trees is competing weeds. So you can combat that in a couple of ways. You can either spray around the base of the tree or you can use a mulch mat, which should last for about four or five years. And that just suppresses the grass growth? That, that'll suppress the, the grass growth, yes. Yeah. Stop, stop the grass out competing the tree for nutrients, etc. And do you think the tubes will need to be taken away at some point? Yeah, when the tree gets to about six or seven year old, the tube will actually start to constrain its growth. So at that point, we're going to want to remove the tube and these tubes can actually be recycled. Fantastic. I'm really looking forward to coming back here in a few years time and seeing a nice young woodland on the way and hopefully be there for generations to come. <laughs> <laughs>